Hey folks, this is Jake Davis with a video for you. And tonight I'm going to talk about uh, my personal picks for the top five best horror films of the 1970s. This is kind of a, a, a serious thing I'm trying to do of a, a horror film theme videos this October in celebration of Halloween, which is my favorite holiday. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, the reason I wanted to do I might do an 80s one. I'm considering it. Uh, because, you know, the 80s, 80s horror movies were so fun. But the, the 70s horror films were so morbid and demoralizing and very, I, I guess, Nietzsche in a lot of ways. Uh, there was just so much doom and gloom and aimlessness to them. Uh, a lot of them are very, very fascinating films. Because, you see, over the history of horror, especially in movies, it's a very straightforward good versus evil kind of thing, and, uh, the 70s roll around, and it's like, yes, yeah, sure, evil is still evil, but good, there's, there's that, that all of protection, of saviorism, I guess, over our heroes is gone, you know, that's kind of attitude that, you know, you could do, follow the rules, do everything right, and, you know, the killer can still get you in the end, kind of stuff, uh, so yeah, here we go. Uh, my my picks for the top five favorite, top five horror films of the 1970s. And please remember, these are my personal personal favorites. Uh, so yeah, don't 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 hate, appreciate. Anyhow, number five is Martin. Yes, 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 yes. I, I know I've talked about Martin before, and if you never heard of Martin or seen Martin, you probably don't give a shit about it. You know what's this movie? It's, it's called Martin. Seriously. But, you know, it's a very fascinating film about a young man who is a serial killer for sure, but believes he is a vampire, but one without, like, any of the vampire powers. He just has the hunger, you know. And the only other character in the story who believes he's a vampire is this, like, 80-year-old man who's just as fucking nuts as Martin. It's a fascinating film with just truly grisly and uncomfortable violence. I mean, they go into great, great detail uh, into what Martin does to his victims. And it can be unsettling. It can be very difficult to watch. Uh, but it's a fascinating, fascinating horror movie. And it's my understanding there's, there's a nearly three-hour cut of this movie floating around there somewhere. I'd, I'd be interested in, sitting th in, in finding that. But, you know, this is adding, that's adding over, over an hour onto the movie's uh, runtime and you know, it's not like this is Tolkien. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I'm a, I would love to check that out, but at the same time, I'm afraid it would ruin the movie for me, you know? Anyhow, number four, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Now, well, you could say Philip Kaufman's uh, 1978 remake was kind of unnecessary, because the 50s movie was so good with uh, Kevin McCarthy. Uh, yeah. The, uh... Body Snatcher 78 is just a mesmerizing work of horror and also paranoia. Um, and it, the the way that they take the huge... Because the old movie was a small town, like a farm town. And it's the, the setting of San Francisco. It's a huge American metropolis. And it feels so isolated, so small. I've never seen any other movie try to... Uh, 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 effectively create the sense of claustrophobic in a wide open space. Uh, and then there's the cast. You know, there, there's Donald Sutherland, Jeff Goldblum, uh, Brooke Adams, Veronica Cartwright, and the late, great Leonard, Mal uh, uh, Leonard Nimoy in probably his best performance. Uh, brilliant score. D uh, 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 immensely terrifying. Truly scary film. Uh, it's it's one of a kind a movie that will if you've if you've ever seen it it will just last with you for a very very long time if not the rest of your life. Uh, number three is John Carpenter's Halloween. John Carpenter's Halloween has always been. Uh, I'll just give you a little bit of backstory here about myself. Uh, oh, just a story here if you indulge. Uh, I, of course, was a fan of horror movies my whole life. I can't remember uh, uh, exactly when I became a fan of horror movies. The first horror movie I remember seeing is uh, Frederick Marsh's Jekyll and Hyde. But I think I've told you folks that before. Anyhow, 
uh, it was 1996. It was actually the last year I ever went out trick or treat. No, you know, I did went out walking about with my cousins and stuff the next year, and I did get dressed up as like the crow. But I don't think I actually trick or treated. Uh, I was 12, or yeah, I was 12 going into 13 that year. So it was a time to finish trick or treating. Anyhow, but it was 96, and I was Chris Cornell. But I wanted to cut trick or oh fuck, I hate that speaker. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to cut trick or treating early that that year because I wanted to catch Halloween on cable. I'd never seen Halloween uncut in its entirety, and I was fucking stoked. Uh, so yeah, man, uh, it was barely dark. Hustle home, and uh, me, and my dad, and my cousin Chuck all watched Halloween, and it was such a blast. It's such a great movie. <coughs> the 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 way it really. Uh, plays into actual real world terrors and paranoias like you know home invasion uh dark suburban streets uh, i mean it's so funny you know i were i grew up uh I, I i i did not i did not grow up in um uh the suburbs <laughs> i grew up in um uh let's just say uh poor <laughs> i grew up poor and just to me the fact that walking down a suburban street when I go visit my in-laws and stuff like walking my dog or just taking a walk with my wife or my daughters <laughs> and now it scares me <laughs> it's just being down this there's, there's too many houses it's too dark man I don't hear nothing I don't hear sirens I don't hear people screaming at each other it's just too quiet here it scares me anyhow <laughs> um yeah Halloween I thought really <laughs> well the whole side thing there but Halloween was a real uh it was, it was pivotal film, you know, in a lot of ways kind of changed, or in a, I guess kind of launched the, the slasher genre. It certainly wasn't the first slasher, but, I mean, Halloween was so good and so successful. It, it I mean, there was a smorgasbord of, um, uh, of rip-offs and parodies. And, yeah, rip-offs and parodies. Uh, number two is Phantasm. I don't know if you folks, I mean... If you've never seen Phantasm, it's a shame. Check it out. And uh, if you oh, have seen... Oh, you bitch. <clears throat> and if you have seen Phantasm, put it in the comments. Let me know. Uh, tell me what you thought of it. Uh, Phantasm is a truly um, surreal film, I guess the best word to describe it. Uh, you really feel like you're, you're trapped in a kid's nightmare with him. Uh, the Tall Man is a great, great horror villain. Almost made my cut. A few weeks ago on that video, and uh, or last week on that video, and uh, the, the very natural it's bad acting, but the bad acting is so natural to the bad dialogue, <laughs> it fits with the whole dreamlike feel that the movie is going for. There's some real, really insane scenes, some great photography, some truly haunting, unforgettable music, and uh, a couple of scenes that uh, uh, are scary for our characters but because of the way they're shot and portrayed are very 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 humorous uh, it's a it's a truly unique one of a kind it's a, a cinematic experience and it really can't even be explained you have to you have to see phantasm and my number one my number one horror film of the 70s is my number one horror film of all time in fact it's on my tv right now and that's the texas chainsaw massacre i think the texas chainsaw massacre is a a true masterpiece uh, i've come across people uh since i shot last talked about it uh back last halloween when i hit was my favorite i did my list of my favorite horror films that uh i guess a lot of people tried to go into the whole political era of, of the time and I don't know I don't see how this is a Vietnam message or anything like that I just thought it was trying to uh, just provide this truly truly horrific and riveting experience cinematically I mean that's why Texas Chainsaw Massacre is uh, my favorite horror film not because it's a fun movie not because it's a flashy movie because it is truly terrifying every time i watch a movie it's just so unsettling it's so terrifying and the dinner scene itself uh was so iconic and so horrific it's tried to i mean it's been ripped off in uh horror movie franchises outside of texas chainsaw freddy krueger had to have a, his scary dinner scene uh hannibal lecter had a scary dinner scene uh, they, they, they do it a lot, um, 
but, you know, Texas Chainsaw is something ma uh, magical in its old morbid and macabre way. Um, and other honorable mentions, uh, for example, uh, I didn't have Dawn of the Dead or Jaws on this list, even though know, those are, are great, great horror movies. Um, it kind of felt like they were genre bending at the same time. Uh, so I don't know. I just I did I just decided to exclude them, but that does not take away from how how great they are. The Omen is also a great great masterpiece with some truly amazing performances, great Oscar winning score, and great you know direction from Richard Donner. But at the same time, it felt kind of too prestigious uh, for the sakes of my list. Um, and you know you know the town that dreads sundown is. Also, very dark, dark, uncomfortable, hard to watch movie. Carrie, so masterfully directed and and played. Eaten alive, Toby Hooper's other brilliant masterpiece. Uh, just the stunning photography and brilliant performance from Neville Brandon in that movie. Theater of Blood is a tour de force by Vincent Price. Uh, the Wicker Man is, I mean, is maybe one, is one of maybe only two, maybe three. Uh, horror musicals I've ever seen that actually worked. Uh, it's, uh, and even the other ones didn't, aren't on its level. Uh, Count Dracula is worth, worth watching just for Christopher Lee's amazing performance. I know he played Count Dracula a lot over the years, but, uh, that was the one where, <coughs> at least for me, he kind of got to do the most Dracula, uh, Stoker-ish Dracula. Um, Taurus Trap is an interesting movie. It's certainly not one of the best horror films of the 70s, but a great performance from, uh... Oh, shit, man. Uh... Oh, fuck, what's his name? The Rifleman. Chuck Connors. Uh, yeah, he's terrific in that. Uh, and there's hard, there's kind of films that, you know, uh... You know, a lot of people love Suspiria. Suspiria's great. The Exorcist is great. Um... But, you know, I just, uh... Well, the, the, like I said, they're amazing movies, but... They weren't my breed of horror film, and everybody got their own brew. You know, what I mean, horror is and is and of itself a required taste. Uh, like how uh, what's his name, uh, James A. Janice. Uh, I mention him all the time. My channel, I love the guy's show, Kill Count, uh, Dead Meat on YouTube. Uh, I uh, I disagree with him about movies all the time. Uh, even leave shit in the comments. But anyhow, uh fucking ramble off again hope y'all like this video share subscribe all that wonderful juicy stuff um i'm gonna try to uh i, I got ideas for uh, other top fives for this horror season i definitely want to do uh top five grace horror movie stars might save that for halloween maybe top five best stephen king adaptations but i'm definitely now thinking of going from the nietzsche uh fucking 70s era of horror movies to the sleazy 80s era of horror movies that could be really fun anyhow uh hope y'all like this video already said that i'm jake davis and i'll catch you on the fly